Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through the complete works of William Shakespeare, and we're going to see which word he used most often, and we're going to do this in C++. Uh, simply go to gutenberg.org, and you will find the complete works of William Shakespeare on this website. And just go down to this plain text UTF-8 document, click on it, and simply copy this link, open your terminal, and type delete get, and then paste the link. If it's not clear, like this. And uh, if you're on Windows, I think you can save this from the browser, but whatever. Anyways, so just download this uh, file and you will have the complete works of William Shakespeare on your computer ready to go. Anyways, uh, let's uh, get back to it. So let's uh, make a new file. Okay, now that we have that, we are going to create a file stream for the file we just downloaded. So we're going to do std f stream f. Okay, so the name of the file here is pg100.txt. Great. Then we're going to define a string and we need to include string for this. Yeah. So I'm going to make a new variable called line and it's going to be a string. So what we're going to do is going to say std get line and then we're going to pass in the file stream here and then we're going to pass in the variable to get the line that should be fine and then i'm gonna see out line okay uh let's see what we got from this so to compile this we're gonna do g plus plus main.cpp okay oh okay let's compile this again See how does that member FSTD? Oh, well, yeah, we need to include IO stream as well. Okay, so we got the first line in this document. That's great. So now what we want to do is we want to get every single line from this document. And to do that, we're just going to put this get line function into a while loop. It's going to say while. And uh, down here, we're just going to print out the line. Okay, great. So it's printing out all of the stuff. And to check how many lines this is, the WC-L. And we can see that there are about 170,000 lines in this document. Okay, so next up, what we want to do is we want to split this line so that uh, we can access each word individually. So now we have the whole line being sent to us, but what we want to, is we want to deal with uh, each word on a word-to-word -word basis. Now, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use std, use split, So basically what's going to happen here is uh, this this uh, split view is going to just break down this line into subranges, which are going to be uh, just the beginning and end of every single word split on a new line or not a new line, but on the space character. So now if you want to print the individual words, what we can do is we can do for auto m split. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say auto mstr. So I'm calling this my str is equal to string m dot begin m dot end. Okay, so we create a new string from this range that we got from uh, this split variable. So now what we're going to do is we are going to simply print out mstr. Okay, let's uh, compile this and see what we got. Oh yeah, uh, make sure you include ranges. And I think you also need to include algorithm. Uh, just include algorithm because I think I'll use it later. Okay. 
and uh, this should be this should be a C plus plus twenty. Okay. Okay, so now what we're getting is we are getting all of the words uh, individually. So instead of getting a whole line, we're getting individual words, and uh, we're getting a couple of uh, white space characters that aren't uh, spaces, I believe. Anyways, uh, so now that we have that, what we want to do is we want to count how many times specific words appear. And to do that, we're going to use a map. So let's uh, go up here and find a new map. And what this map is going to have is it's going to have a string and it's going to have a count. So the key is going to be the string and the count is going to be an integer. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're creating a new map, and this map has a key, which is a string, and the value is going to be an int. So the way we're going to use this is we're going to check if a key exists, and if it does, we are going to increase the count. Otherwise, we're going to set the count to be 1. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to say if word count dot find. MSTR is not equal to word count dot end. So we're checking if we actually found this word. And if we did, what we're going to do is we're going to say word count MSTR plus equals one. Else, uh, we're going to say word. So uh, the else case is the case in which we did not find this word. So otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to say word okay so what we're doing here is we're saying if we found this word if we found mstr we're going to increase the word count by one so we're going to increase the value at this key by one otherwise we're going to set the value at this uh, key to be one i hope that makes sense so now that we have done that uh, what's going to happen is we are going to go outside of this while loop and what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the map. And what we're going to do is we're going to print this out. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. Oof. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to include map. World count, yeah. Okay, so I typed world, not word. Let's try this again. Oof, I keep using... Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, remove this uh, C out up here because we don't need this anymore. Uh, what we're interested in is the one down here. So, so let's uh, let's uh, compile this again and run it. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of those uh, print statements up there and uh, compile this again and run it. So I think what we should do is we should try sorting by value. So instead of seeing, so for example, here we have a test is used 480 times, right? So I think what we can try doing is we can try sorting uh, all of these uh, uh, key value pairs by the value. 
Anyways, so the next step is probably going to be to sort them. So the problem here is that you can't really sort a map the same way you can with a vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to convert this um, I'm simply going to convert this map into a vector and then and this is going to have uh, std pair I think I need to include a vector up here or it's going to be an issue okay so what I'm going to do is going to include a vector I'm going to say std pair and then we are going to give this the same so what we're going to do is we're going to give this the same data types that uh exist in our map so we say std spring and int so this is this vector is going to contain a pair of uh, string and int I'm going to call this vp then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just push back into this vector all of the elements inside of our map I think this will work, or maybe I should do something like this. No, I, th I think I think that's fine. Let me check. Okay, I don't think that worked out very well. Okay, so let's see what we got. So we have we have an issue with data cleaning, so I, I guess we have to kind of clean up a couple of characters or so. Down here we have uh, invisible characters here, so I, I guess these need to be cleaned up. Um, unsurprisingly, the most used word that Shakespeare used was the, uh, second up is I, then and, to, of, a, my, in, you, is, that, and again. Uh, I, I guess another thing is we have to kind of like lowercase these characters. So. Uh, to normalize this data, we, we could uh, lowercase all of the characters so they match up better. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So th what we see here is that uh, the most used word that Shakespeare ever used was the, followed by I, and two of whatever. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you like this video, thanks, and I will see you later.